All right. So uh, I'm sure you'll all be happy to hear that this is a sponsored talk, also known as a thinly disguised marketing pitch. Ooh, hiss, boo, boo, boo. Um, OK, so if you would like to leave the room at this point, like this gentleman, uh, there's a much better talk on NumPy. Uh, just make your excuses. We won't be offended. We totally understand. Um, but uh, in order to expiate our own guilt and make this as good for you as possible, um, we'll promise several things. Uh, first of all, everything we're going to show you today is entirely free and will always be free, so it's just out there for you guys. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we're going to do the entire presentation through the medium of interpretive dance. Uh, not really. Uh, it will instead be through the medium of a small sketch show. Um, so we'll introduce the uh, uh, cast of characters. Um, I am uh, an enthusiastic teacher, uh, brimming with excitement at trying to teach Python skills and programming skills to uh, uh, bright students. And <coughs> I'm, I'm a very smart but totally new to programming student. Very good. Come a little bit this way, Giles. You'll be in video range that way. That's a good idea. OK. So, uh, all right, Giles, um, let's get Python installed and we can start learning to program. Um, if you just pop on over to the uh, Python website, uh, download and then install uh, Python on your laptop. OK. I think I've got it installed, so how do I start programming? Uh, right, OK, so just uh, open up you know, a terminal and uh, type Python and you'll get the Python prompt. No, nah, no, it says command not found. Uh, OK. So listen, um, Giles, when, um, when you, when you, when you uh, downloaded the, the DMG uh, Mac install thing, you definitely, did you drag that to the application? No, no, I'm, like I'm, on, I'm on a PC, I'm not on a Mac. Uh, of course he is. All the students have got PCs. Right, um, OK, so uh, Google's frantically. Um, right, I think if you have managed to install Python correctly, it says here that you have to add Python to the path, because although that is an option in the Python installer these days, which is wonderful, um, uh, that's unticked by default. So uh, what you need to do, Giles, is just add um, the uh, Python's directories to the path set, uh, environment variable, you know. I have no idea what you just said there, Harry. Okay, uh, all right, okay. Um, installs Windows onto virtual machine, uh, tries to get XP working. Um, right, it looks like what you need to do is click the start button, uh, then you go to start control button, panel, okay. then you go to system settings, mm -hmm. then you go to advanced settings, advanced then you find settings, the entry wow. called, yes. You, you, you find the entry called path, right, which is a long string of okay. text characters, and then you need to add this, okay? Be careful, like, so you have to type this right. Okay. C colon backslash. Python 3.4 backslash semicolon C colon backslash Python 3.4 backslash scripts semicolon and then the rest of the text that was already there. But, but, but Harry, you, you just said 3.4, right? Yeah, 3.4, yeah. <coughs> no, but, but, but my friend Jane said that uh, 2.7 is the one that everyone uses, that 3.4 is just some fancy thing that nobody actually uses, so that's when I downloaded and installed. Should uh, I put 2.7 instead? Yeah, okay, all right, yes. No, we do need to use 3.4, oh. and I'll cue a massive rewind as we go back to the start of this story and do it again, except this time with Python 3.4. Although, of course, that then introduces the fun of installing two different versions of Python on the same system, um, which you might be able to get working on Linux, but on a PC, uh, finding one executable that's going to be Python 3 and Python, um, as we all know, is not necessarily the easiest. But let's suppose that we get more or less to the end of that. <coughs> We've got the right version of Python installed, haven't we, Giles? I hope so. Good. Um, so let's try some programming. So in your okay. Python prompt, will you type for me, type exactly this, it's important that we have to have the syntax right, print, open brackets, quote, hello world, close quote, close brackets. All right, and if you do that, it should actually print something out to the screen. What it, it yeah, it, it prints something out. What does it say? Uh, it says a syntax error. Right, right, okay, okay. Um, all right, well, let, let, why don't we just come over there and take a look over your shoulder, and then maybe I can see what you've typed, and, uh, and I'll be able to help. But you've kind of forgotten we're t in totally different countries. Oh, that's right, we're in different countries. I can't go and look over your shoulder. Boy, this makes debugging your issues a lot harder. Mm. Yeah, so Harry, um, Yes. I'm actually no longer a PC user. I've suddenly become a Mac user. And actually, in the interest of gender balance, I'm now a lady called uh, Giles Lena. And I've also been told that because I'm doing this astrophysics stuff, I need this external package called SciPy, Sippy, something like that. Okay. Right, well, 
Now we've got the nightmare of trying to get pip installs and compilers working, but at least Jars is on a Unix platform, a nice Mac, and they just work, right? So I should have much fewer issues getting Python working than I do on a PC, right? Yeah, kinda. Kinda? What, why, why? Well, why Jars, what, what's wrong? Well, I, I installed both Python 2 and Python 3 on the Mac as well. And, but unfortunately, they didn't work. And then one of my friends said this thing called Homebrew was better. So I installed Python with that. And now I've got three Python interpreters. When I run uh, pip to pip install stuff, I don't know which version of Python it's installing to, but it's not the one I want. And when I run pip3, I get loads of permission errors because I read on Stack Overflow, you should always run it with sudo. So I did that once. Now everything's owned by root. <laughs> and I can't install anything. I can't even run anything. OK. OK. All right. I'm sure we can sort this all out, actually, actually, because there is a Python 3.4 solution to this. There's the ensure pip module, isn't it? Which should be able to bootstrap and download the pip for you, and there's the, the VNs module for you. So that should, should work. I think that's probably foolproof, isn't it? So let's go ensure pip. What? <coughs> well, it might be, but now I've magically transformed again, and I'm actually a Debian user. Oh. And ensure, ensure pip doesn't work because the package maintainers have decided that the required VM module needs to be in a separate package. And it's not installed by default, so that doesn't work at all. I've been reading absolutely fascinating mailing list discussions all about this stuff. <laughs> I envy the dead. <laughs> if only, only there, there was, was a better, better way. way. <laughs> um, so now we rewind. <laughs> right back to the beginning of the story. <laughs> um, programming. So, Harry, I've heard about this website called Python Anywhere which means I apparently don't have to install Python at all. Should we try that? Um, okay, I guess. Um, why don't I sign up for an account now? Me too. All right, this is the bit where the demo gods will be against us or not. Wow, Python anywhere. Look at its beautiful color scheme. And look at this. The logo is a little snake, but it's made out of Python interpreter chevron. That is so clever. <laughs> Log in, oh, I don't have an account, but I can sign up here, that's nice. What's this, hmm, pricing plans, these all cost money. No, 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 I don't think I'm paying for anything. Beginner account, like everyone does. Username, haha, I know what this, Harry rocks. Bye, email, harry at, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> I'll help. There you go, yes, yes, all GR, that's what it is. Portuguese keyboard, man. I've never touched this laptop. Okay, password. Password two. <laughs> password two. I agree to the terms and conditions, and I will read them in detail. <laughs> Let's have a look. Da -da -da -da. Hooray! Okay, well, it looks like I've been signed up for an account. This is a sure is a helpful, friendly welcome screen. What do we have to say next? Da -da -da -da. Okay, so Giles, how do we start a Python console? <coughs> well, there's this very large thing in front of me that says consoles, and there's a thing that says Python. Maybe I should click one of those? Oh, okay, yeah, I see them too. Ooh, look at that, they have IPython. Giles, why don't you start an IPython 3.4 console? Okay. <laughs> oh, just why would the scroll go backwards? No, 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 no. All right, fine, okay, good. Um, so, you've got IPython in front of you now? I think I do. All right, great. So now will you type for me, print, open brackets, open quotes, hello world, close quotes, close brackets, and press enter. And now the Python should print something to the screen for you. What is it printed? Well, it let's print see. Something? It should print something. Yeah, it prints something again. Oh, great. What does it say? Invalid syntax. Oh, what shall we do now? Wait. I've heard that Python Anywhere has some education features. Giles, I've heard Giles, that too. if you navigate over to the accounts page, I think you might be able to specify me as your teacher, and then I'll be able to help you interactively. Well, let's try that. Well, it's always a bad idea learning a, pro a programming language when you're actually tethered to your Android cell phone. <laughs> okay. What was your username, Harry? It is Harry Rocks. I use that everywhere. How do, uh, how do I spell that? H-A-R-R-Y-R-O-C-K-S. Not with an X. Uh, okay, I've done that. Oh, okay, good.
good. Well, let's see if that's registered in the system. Come on, Mark. Ooh, look at this. Now it's telling me that I'm logged in as Harry Rocks, currently viewing Harry Rocks, but I can switch to viewing Giles the student. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> oh, and now I can see Giles has already opened some consoles. I wonder which one of these is the console that he's got a problem with. Look at that. I can just open it up. I can see exactly what Giles has been doing. Oh, there you, you go. Told me, you told me to type exactly what you said, so that's what I did. Um, all right, what happens next? It's a shame that we have to keep skipping to the script and then people read it. Guys, like, <laughs> just, just close your eyes for a minute. There you go. Harry. <laughs> well, what? I couldn't print it out. There you go. Uh, okay, right, fine. No, 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 thanks. All right. So, Giles, I would like to help you fix this. Okay, and I mean, great. I could explain slowly to you exactly how to print that to, to do this, but why don't I just demonstrate it to you instead? So, I can type into the console. And we go open brackets, quotes, uh, yeah, as if I'm going to find some quotes on this. <laughs> quotes, yes. <laughs> Hello, Europyto. Close quotes, which is not even written on that key. Enter. Look at that, Giles. Open oh, I brackets, see. Now it quotes. all becomes clear. Hello, Europython. Wow. Why don't you give that a go for yourself? You can press the <coughs> up arrow to repeat the previous command and then edit it slightly. Well, let's try that. Wow, if Pretty only dark. I could type. <laughs> Amazing. Don't you think the colors in this console are pretty as well, John? Yes, they are. A round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations. <coughs> but, what, uh, but, but, but what about that SciPy thing that I was told I needed to use? Oh, right. To install that or something? Oh, God, installing SciPy. I don't know how that's going to happen. I mean, oh, I remember doing this on my own laptop. You had to get a compiler. There's no way that this Python thing is going to be able to compile things. You're going to have to... Like download a wheel. I don't know what platform it is. I just, oh no, Joe, I don't think. Maybe we should just leave the sci-fi thing for for another time. I don't know. Well, <coughs> all the sci-fi scripts I've seen start with this magic word import sci-fi. Maybe we could try that. Maybe you could try typing it as well because my internet connection just disappeared. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know that it does say that on the instructions, but the thing is, you have to install these things first. So like, there's not. This doesn't work. You have to first. You have to pip install it. Okay. Okay. Looks like it's all there. Wow, SciPy installed by default. All of those installation hassles that I thought I was going to have to deal with are just magically solved for me straight away. Thanks, Python Anywhere. <laughs> okay, shh, close your eyes again, everyone. <laughs> no, you're not you're really closing your eyes. I can hear you guys thoroughly. giggling. Right, okay. All right, fine, good. Um, so, Charles, now let's do some assignments. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you an assignment. Okay. Uh, so should we just use the same system as we did before we started using Python anyway? You just email me the assignments, but you just need to remember to tell me exactly where to save the, uh, save the files. Because you remember all the problems we had when I tried doing Python, my assignments, and it just didn't work. Because you didn't tell me where to install that? Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I, that'll work. I mean, I'll, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then when I've completed the assignment, I'll do what I usually do. So I'll take a screenshot, I'll put that in a PDF, attach that to a Word document, and then email it to you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, th the important thing is that the process works. Yeah, it does. Well, Giles, we could do that, but actually, I know that Python Anywhere has education features, and uh, so I'm going to take a look at their documentation and see if there's anything they can do to help with this. What I love about this website is it's got such powerful servers uh, that it doesn't matter how slow the internet connection is, it responds like lightning. <coughs> um, Except on this laptop, why it's not working as well. <laughs> so, um, uh, what are we doing here? Five minutes. Uh, we've got, uh, where are we on our little story? Um, I'm reading the documentation and I'm finding out that, oh yes, magically, because I'm a teacher, I can actually access all of Giles' files directly. So, if I was to open up one of our little editors here, and I can go and start a new file, which I'm going to call week3.py. And then, okay, close your eyes. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, Z. Come on, V. Oh, syntax highlighting, so pretty. There we go. We can save that. Good. Why is he unhappy? It's because there's no path over here. Look at that. Pyflakes checks built into the editor. So useful for beginners. Come on, there we go. Save. Console parent. 
start a bash console. Goodness me, so I don't have just IPython consoles. I can also start a full bash Linux environment, and everything is in here, and I have an ms slash, oh God, where is the backslash Giles? <laughs> <laughs> And I slash home. I've got my own home directory, and I can see Giles's home directory. So if I copy the week three dot pi two dot dot uh, slash Giles student, dunk, maybe that's going to magically appear in Giles's home directory. Let's go and have a look because I can actually see all Giles's files and folders. Now here I am viewing Harry. Switch to viewing Giles. I go to his files directory, and look at that, week3.py has magically appeared in Giles' home directory. And now you go on and try and solve the problem. Shall I um, do that now while you talk? Okay, yeah, why don't you carry on and, and do that, and while I start thinking about next week's assignment, because next week we have to do web development, and uh, I mean, like, there's lovely frameworks in Python, isn't there? But I also want to get my student to deploy his code on the internet. And if you thought that getting Python installed on a laptop on across multiple platforms was quite difficult, just you try doing what, what's done? Oh, you've solved the problem. Oh, well done. Laptop. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but um, what I'm, I, as I was saying, um, yeah, God, web development headaches. I've had to deal with this a lot. Starting to think about huh, where am I going to get a virtual machine from, and I'm going to have to set up user accounts on there, and I need him to do the SSH key gen command and set up an SSH key with a passphrase, and he can do SSH login to the server, and then we're going to have to install uh, Nginx or Apache, certainly not Apache, Nginx, Nginx, but then we need a front end web server, so we're going to have to have Junior Unicorn and get his code. Oh God, he's got to get his code on there, so we're going to have to FTP it up and explain how FTP works, and then once we've got the code on there, we're going to have to install stuff. Probably virtual ends, so I'm gonna, am I going to have to explain virtual ends? I think I'm just going to have to do it for, because I mean, he's not going to be able to edit all these config files anyway. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, all right, I will do the editing of the config files on the server as long as I can involve Giles in the process, and then he'll probably be able to see his web app. Oh, God, and then I've got to make sure that port 80 is open on the firewall, and then um, anybody here an Amazon user? Okay, yeah, what? Oh, my God! I have a God. web app. Okay, everyone, well, that was it. That's pretty much a tour of Python Anywhere. Uh, I hope it wasn't too tedious. Um, the, uh, that was pretty much all of our, our, our features. There's a few other things you can do. You can run scheduled tasks. You can uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, we've just started uh, doing uh, education stuff. So we're really interested in getting new people on board. Um, uh, it's all free. Uh, and uh, we've had maybe a couple of dozen teachers on there now. Um, so in students, it might be 100 or more? Yeah, just over 100, I think. Okay. So like we've got about a couple of dozen teachers on there running classes. We've got a couple of hundred, well, 100 students. Um, uh, they're all using it. Um, but we're really interested in getting new people on there, getting some feedback, getting you guys to suggest new things. Um, what should I say? There are a few limitations, right? This is not the magical solution to everything. Um, one of the first things is this is a server-based computing environment. All the Python here runs on our servers, so they don't have access to any kind of graphics or display. So, I mean, you can build a web application, you can have a lovely text console with colors, but you can't do Turtle and you can't do Pygame. Um, but for like maybe slightly more advanced students, uh, it's great to be able to do web development easily. And we can also recommend our uh, frenemies at uh, trinket.io who've built a sort of browser-based Python sort of sharing platform. And their Python runs uh, in, as a, in a sort of JavaScript emulator. Uh, and they do support Turtle. And they're thinking about supporting Pygame. Good luck to them. Um, but I mean, Trinket is great. Like it's, it's really easy to share a little snippet and you can have pictures and stuff and it makes it really easy to share it between students and things like that. Um, but so that's where we are. We've got, uh, yeah, no, we've got our teachers on board. We've got students. We've got people doing screen sharing. You can share consoles like this. The teacher can have a demo console they share with their students. They can share it read-only. You can exchange files like we sort of demoed. Uh, all of these sorts of things. But we're really looking for people to come in and have more suggestions. And we're also really keen to make sure this is a success for our first few teachers. So we're always happy to go the extra mile to do some manual steps. If you're like, oh, I need to bulk register 100 users, we'll do that for you. If you're like, oh, please pre-prepare all of their home folders with this GitHub checkout, we'll do that for you. That's of stuff, um, and and that's about it, really. Um, so, are there? Uh, yeah. So, unless there are any questions, comments, feedback, suggestions, straight away, that's what we'd like to take. Hello, and there you go. There's a plant over there. What about you, sir? Yeah. So, so <coughs> the logistics was one of the things that I thought about. Um, 
So I have around like 50 students. Um, and I mean, having students with like weird usernames, uh, it would be better if I know who they are, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so I, I use like, um, uh, like uh, student response systems, which are online, and I do the registration for them there and give them their password. Yeah. Um, but but so so you said that that wasn't inside now, but you sort of could do a workaround or something. Yeah, we so we've we've when we bulk create accounts, either if you give us a load of email addresses, we'll generate a username based on their um, you know the before the at bit from their email address, um, or uh, we can generate randomized usernames, which you probably don't want. Um, those are the two options currently, and we can also go like your username then one, your username two, yours is you know, something like that. So have have another crack. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, so uh, do you do any authentication stuff? Because I mean, at yeah, yeah, we'll generate usernames for you. No, I mean, I mean, but but external authentication. Oh right, yeah, we haven't done that, but uh, we are, that's on the that's on the agenda for pretty soon, isn't it? <laughs> like so, third party authentication thing. You want to do? Yeah, maybe use their Google accounts or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're looking into that, so that might actually happen soon, but I don't want to promise right here. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. Hi, Harry. Hello, Hello Charles. That was a really entertaining talk. Um, so, I'm Nicholas, and I work at Scott Grove Comprehensive School in Scunthorpe, and we're on XP with IE6. Can you help me? Yeah. Um, yes, no, no, no. Yeah, mm. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like a lot of schools have got. Uh, you know, one of the advantages here is that you're going to be able to run Python without installing software onto school laptops, and you know, maybe school IT systems are a bit conservative. On the other hand, if they're that conservative that they're stuck on IE6, you know, maybe we really can't help that much. But it's worth a try. So we support more things than we thought. Um, a lot of schools are starting to give out Chromebooks to their students, and then like, and they're like, oh, wonderfully shiny, shiny, but no Python. So that's one solution for that as well. Okay, anything else? Comments, reactions, suggestions on how to improve the talk? Um, Look at that. Oh, that, no, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Hide the script. No, no, that's not. We did actually, yeah. Yeah, so, so um, another way that, that I use uh, Python is during lectures, I have like uh, live demos. Yeah. And currently, we have this uh, web system, which is actually also using Sculpt web that uh, Tinker is using. Yeah. Um, and that enables me to sort of just give my students a URL. Yeah. They get it. They don't have to log in or anything. They yeah. can just follow along. Yeah. Is that possible with Python anywhere? It, it anonymous sort of. Anonymous console sharing to a wide. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, we have we support like so the the console sharing feature where a teacher can see their students is actually uh, uh, grown out of a previous feature that we built. With. So anyone can share a console with anyone else on Python anywhere. And we've also got the ability to share it with anonymous strangers. So if you fill in an email address, we'll send someone an email with a unique URL to that console, and then they can go in on the internet without logging in, and they can see exactly what you're typing into that shell. Um, and so you can send that, um, you know, you can send that email to a, a group, and so you can send that to a mailing list, um, or we could uh, include. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone sees the same one, but you can share it read-only, so it's a demo-only thing. Yeah. Uh, well, so that console, that, right, yeah, so that console is like a single console for the whole group, so then you've got the sort of read-only settings. If you did have your students all registered, you can like log them all in and then switch read-only on and off for one of them at a time if you want to hand over control to one student and things like that. Um, are you thinking that it would be nice to be able to share things with students and then they can sort of fork it and go off on their own? Yeah, all right, we'll have to think about how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good suggestion. Yeah. 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 All right. I think there's ways and ways to do that, but we could probably make it slicker. Yeah. Good suggestion. Thank you very much. Aha. Uh, yeah. It looks really great, and there's lots of stuff for free, and uh, I can see it being really brilliant. Um, but obviously, you're a company that makes money. So, what are the paid options? What do you get for them? And sort of, who who's the target demographic for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, because because I might be interested. You see. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, oh. oh, right. Well, if he's interested, I, so, so don't don't so, do the evil laugh. So, uh, good question. Obviously. Um, uh, well, basically, you are the product. 
No, uh, it's, a, it's a freemium model, so we just hope to get, you know, like, so if we have a, a sort of 10% ratio of users who end up needing the paying features, then we're great. So the education deal is like, we get a bunch of students used to Python anywhere, so later on when they wanna do some more professional programming, they at least think of us as an option, and then they like, you know. So at the moment, all the free features is you can start up to two consoles at once, so you have to close one if you need more than two. Uh, you can uh, have 500 megs of storage, uh, you can store one web application, which is at your username.pythonanywhere.com, and that's free. Um, but the things you have to pay for is like, do you want more uh, than two consoles? Do you want a greater CPU quota? So we start throttling people after, and it's the equivalent of like, um, what's the CPU quota for free users, 500? Uh, 100, 100 CPU seconds. So if you max out the CPU for a minute and a half, we then start throttling it. I mean, not, not that aggressively, but you know, like if you're really gonna use it for serious number crunching, you might wanna think about paying for an account. Although a lot of people who don't, and we still do run their jobs for them. Um, and finally, uh, if you wanna do any web hosting on your own domains, then we ask you to pay for that. So, so if, you, if, you have a, if you wanna get away from the Python Anywhere branding. So that's, that's kind of the line of this uh, at the moment. Charge for Python 2. Charge for Python 2. <laughs> 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 Good All right, um, it's out of time, it's time for lunch. So thanks very much, Harry and Giles.